In this video, we're going to go over how to make a histogram in Excel. Now, there's two ways to do this in Excel. One way is, so if you go to insert, you use the Excel charts. That's what we're going to go over in this video. But if you go to data analysis, so data analysis, now this might not show up for you. This is an add-in. You have to go to, to file options, add-ins. But once you have this, if you, go, if you go to it, you can see you can insert a histogram this way. I'll plan to go over this method of making a histogram in another video. Okay, so in the previous video, we made this distribution table. We pulled data from a website that gave us batting averages each year in Major League Baseball from 1871 to 2024. We made this distribution table using these batting averages. And so now we want to make a histogram. So, okay, if you go to insert charts and you click here, so you can insert a histogram. So if we click here, but we don't select any data, we can get rid of the title. If you right click and, and go to select data, so you can add a series, and you can also add a horizontal axis. The way the histogram chart works in Excel is, so like the most default way that it works is all it needs is a series. It doesn't even need a horizontal axis. And the series is just one column or one row of data points. So for example, if we come here and we say series name, batting average well let okay no let's do this so we come we come to this tab now we insert a histogram let's okay so we've got a blank histogram add a series and we select this entire column Okay, that's all Excel needs to make like a default histogram. It doesn't need you to input an X axis because what it does is it takes all of the, those data points and creates the bins from those data points and, and applies the counts to within each of the bins that it created. So you see it went it goes from 0.237 to 0.3162 so it creates like the bin range and this is just a count of the number of data points within the bin that it created within the bins that it created okay so that is the most default way of making a histogram you don't do a frequency distribution table you just highlight one column or one row of data points put that as the the series in the histogram don't have a horizontal axis and boom, it, it outputs this histogram for you. Now, when you look at the bins, you can see it, how, how it specifies the bin range and it, it'll do a bracket to indicate if that endpoint is included in the bin and it'll do a parentheses to indicate if that endpoint is not included in the bin. So these brackets or parentheses indicate the endpoint convention. Now, if you double click on the horizontal axis, it brings up the axis options. So automatic just means that it calculates the bin, the number of bins, the bin widths, the endpoints of the bins, the range, all, it does it all automatically. If you want to adjust the bin width or the number of bins, so these are gonna, these are like a function of one another, right? So if we say we want 10 bins, if you remember from the previous video that, that this is the bin width we calculated and it, this goes from 0 0.237 to 0 0.309, okay? Or we, we could put a bin width, we could specify a bin width. Okay, now you could also specify an overflow bin or an underflow bin. And what this means is that the, the, first, the first or the last bin, if we wanted to say that we wanted to have the last bin be anything that's greater than a batting average of 0 0.3, we would do 
And that's what it does. You see, this last bin is any batting average that's greater than 0.3. And same, same idea with the underflow bin. If we wanted to say that this is any batting average that's less than 0.24, let's say. Okay, so that's how you can do these, that they call them overflow and underflow bins. Okay, but we may want to use a distribution table that we created, right? So the way you do this is we go, we go to select data and let's clear these. So the series in this case is, so it's either going to be a count or percent or percent per the horizontal axis unit. Let's just leave the series name blank and, and we're going to put this series as count here, as, as the count, right? So based on what we just did on the, on, the, on the other tab, it's just doing a histogram with these 10 numbers. So this has nothing to do with batting average. It's just these, we, these random numbers. So this, is, this, this isn't what we, what we want, right? But if we go to the horizontal axis and we, and we specify the batting average ranges here, okay? Now, this is like, I guess, it considers this like text, but this could be numbers as well. So what it's going to do is if we, now we double click the x-axis and we go to buy category. When you do this, what it does is it treats, it, it, it now it considers the, the, it considers this. It considers the horizontal axis and it, it treats the horizontal axis as the bin, like the bins or the, or the bin labels, the bin ranges. So let, let me, let me expand this so we can. And instead of using this as like the raw data, it, 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 it applies a count to each bin. So it takes into it, it treats this more like whenever you do by category, it treats this more like a distribution table. So it's going to say, this is the bin label, right? And this is the, the, the count within that bin or not the count, but whatever you, whatever you specify. So we are specifying count here, but we could have put percent and it would, it would, it would apply, it would make the height equal to the equal to this, whatever we specify as the, uh, the vertical axis here. Okay. Now this doesn't have to be text here. I mean, you could do whatever you want. You see, it's just, it, it, it'll, it, it'll apply whatever's your horizontal axis to your bin. Now, doing it this way, we get the same result as the regular Excel histogram. And I, and I went ahead before this video, I added these brackets, right? So in the previous video, that was the, this was the endpoint convention that we used. This 2.2442 is not included in this bin, but it's included in this bin. Okay, but whenever you do by category, you, you, there's no adjusting the bin width because this gives you, you're, you're giving it the number of bins here. Like however many columns you have, that's how many bins there's going to be. So if I clicked, if, if, I, if I clicked number of bins 10, it goes back to, it ignores the horizontal axis now, even though there's, even though there's a horizontal axis, it's ignoring it. And it's just doing, it's treating this like the raw data for the histogram. You see, this goes from 1 to 39. That's, that's the range of this, 1 to 39. But if you go to by category, now it's, it's treating this, this horizontal axis like the bin labels. This whole, there's 10, there's 10, well, there's 10 columns here. Not, not, there's 10 rows here, not columns. It's, it's taking these 10 rows as the, bin, as the number of bins, and the height of each bin is given by the, the, whatever you specify as the series. Okay, now if you want to, you can click to add data labels and it shows the count or, or whatever you have as the, as the Y axis here. And then if you want to delete those, you just, you click on, on one, of the, one of them and press delete. Okay, you can add your axes, titles, change the fonts, colors, just like you do any other Excel chart. Okay, now, so let, let's, let's, put the day labels back. Let's come here and let's put the data labels. 
Now, remember with this chart, all we did was we added a histogram and just highlighted the raw data. And so if we double click the, the X axis, if we specify there's 10 bins and we can see what the bin width is, so that's equivalent to the setup we have here, right? We, we, this has 10 rows and the bin width is just based on what, because we built, it's based on what we built. Like we, we built this, so we know the bin widths and the bin endpoints. So we should have the same histogram, right? But if you look, well, they are actually the same. They shouldn't be the same because I had it set up to where, okay, yeah, so I forgot to put it back, but right now it's set up to where the, if, if we, okay, so let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it. You can see I have the right endpoint as included and the left endpoint is not included, but that's not, that's not how it's labeled here. So let me put it, let me put it to where the left endpoint is included and the right endpoint is not included. Okay, so this is, this is how we had it yesterday, right? The left endpoint was included, the right endpoint is not included. Okay, now we made this default histogram here, and, and so they, they should be the same, but if you look, they're not the same. Okay, so again, if we would have just made the histogram starting from where we left off in the last video, we would have noticed that the histograms aren't the same. 11, 22, 39, 32, 11, 22, 39, 32, okay. 20, 12, 10, 6, 23, 9, 10, 6. So, it's, it's, the, the difference is this endpoint convention. This is including the right endpoints, not including the left endpoint. And so if we change it. Okay, so now let me adjust the, the bin labels. Okay. So now with, the, with including the right endpoint, now they're exactly the same. See, 23, 9, 10, 6, 1, 1. 23, 9, 10, 6, 1, 1. Okay, now let's say we wanted to make the histogram exactly how the, the textbook says to do it, where the height of the histogram is set up so that if you take the height of a bin times the bin width, you get the percentage of data points relative to the total data points in that bin. Well, what we would do is we have a, a column here where we say we take the percent divided by the bin width and press F4 here. Now drag this down. This is just like we talked about in the, in the textbook. So you multiply this times the bin width, and you get the percent. Now, let me do this, actually, because we're getting, like, we do 9.9 .9 times 0.0072, we get 0.07, not, but we should, we want to get, like, 7%. So let's multiply this times 100. Okay, so... Okay, so you multiply like 992 times 0.0072, you get 7.14, which is, that, that's the percent value. So now if we, we remove this series and we add this series, and we put our horizontal axis as this. Okay, now we come to by category, and there you go. Now it's set up as, as the textbook talks about, right? 992 times 0.0072 gives you 7.14%. Now to me, count is a little more intuitive. So the, the textbook seems to specify that a proper histogram, you know, it doesn't just it doesn't show the count, but it, it, it expresses the percent. 
to where you can just find the area of the bin and get the percentage of those data points. So if you come back here, this is still the, the relative ratio of the areas of these blocks is proportional to the, the percent of data points. So like you still get a visual interpret, like just looking at the histogram visually, right? You get a visual interpretation of how the data is distributed, but you can't just easily find the percent by just saying this width times 11. So I don't know. I guess to me, if you wanted to use count like this, that you could, that's fine. If you feel like that's, that works for, for your application. Just the key is you have to have the areas have to be pr proportional. Like if, if you divide this area divided by this area, take the area of this block and divide it by the area of this block. That needs to be proportional to the percent difference of the, the, the percent of data points in this in, in this bin divided by the percent of data points in this bin. If you if that's not the case, then it's not a it's not a proper histogram, right? So the percent of data points in this block relative to the total, divided by the percent of data points in this block is going to give you a number. That needs to be equal to, if you took this bin width times 39, you get a number, divide that by this bin width times 22, you're going to get that same number as, as, divide, as, you, as you did if you divide the percents. That must be the case for a, hist, for a proper histogram. But the textbook seems to also suggest, and you can take this or leave it, that the height of a proper histogram needs to be such that you take the width of the histogram times the height, you get the percent of data points in that interval, in that class interval. So you can take that or leave it. Now, as far as creating a histogram with unequal bin widths, well, first of all, that's easy to do if, if you want to adjust the distribution table. Just specify your intervals, right? So you might say, this goes from 0.2442 to 0.2530. And then, and then so here you put 0.2530 to 0.2586, right? And then you come here, remember from the previous video, we did this, and then just adjust your, your, the criteria. And so it'll update the count. Now I've looked into how to create a histogram with unequal bin widths in Excel. I found a, a couple of methods, but I'm not sure how reliable those are. It, it, like you, you create, like you kind of specify the coordinates of each bin, which is kind of involved, but you could do that. And then you go to insert and you insert an, um, an area chart. And then you have to change the horizontal axis to a date axis. And then, it, and then it turns it into rectangular blocks. But I tried doing that and it didn't change it into rectangular blocks. And, and so maybe that's because the, the, the current versions of Excel don't work that way. So I don't know how reliable that is. Let's see. I looked into, so you can create, if, if we highlight the data here and go to insert and go to a bar chart. So that I inserted a, a 2D or a column chart, not bar chart, sorry, a 2D column chart. So this, it has the count, right? So that, that's the, that's the, the, the count, the series, and then, the, and then this is the horizontal axis. And then you double click the, the, the blocks and you bring the gap width, well, not all the way to zero, but like leave a, leave a, a, just a small space like that. So that, this is another way to create a histogram in Excel, but I was hoping that maybe I could so select one of these and adjust the, the gap width, but it doesn't work that way. I, I tried creating like separate series. So like make like the first three bins the same or, or make all of the bins that or equal with one series and then unequal and then the unequal bin widths another series, but that didn't really work. So, if anyone's got a comment on how on, on a reliable way to do this, drop a comment. Um, I, there's definitely other softwares you can use, other graphing softwares like MATLAB that that could do this. But as far as Excel, I don't have a way of doing this right now. But if I find one, I'll make another video.